It is an incredible opportunity to start our Thursday praising the Lord. I know it's a huge blessing for me personally. It's like the highlight of my day, and uh, I hope it is for you too. And I just want to say thank you to all the students for just giving it up and having, having an incredible worship session. Uh, we are continuing our series of our teachers presenting today, and I'm very excited about this. Our speaker today has been a part of our team, one of our longest uh, members. He is the boys basketball coach at the varsity level. He is the associate athletic director and uh, for junior high and elementary and the uh, high school. And he just is a legend on his own. Please give it up for Mr. Bonson. <laughs> and world history teacher and all of the other things so there you are sir thank you yep golf too yeah in fact just want to share this we have a female golfer in the high school who yesterday took uh third place in the league tournament which qualifies her for cif so if you see izzy exxon in the hallways tell her congratulations um, before I get started, I just wanted to uh, thank the worship team and all of you guys. It brings uh, just uh, great joy to my heart to see you guys worshiping the Lord. So thank you for that. If I could, let's open uh, with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, just uh, thank you for today. Thank you for this time, uh, the short time that I can share with the students. Some things on my heart. I pray, Lord, that uh, you give me the words uh, to speak. I pray that you'd give them the ears to be attentive. Lord, as we go through this day, we just thank you for your grace and love, and I pray that we uh, demonstrate that to one another. In your name we pray, amen. All right, guys, so today I'm going to be talking to you about something called uh, a growth mindset, and uh, I think this is something that is actually severely lacking in our culture today, um, especially American culture. And uh, so I'm going to explain a little bit about growth mindset and then sort of present it to you from, in my mind, a biblical perspective, from a biblical worldview. Uh, a growth mindset really comes down to uh, a, pers a person developing uh, habits or abilities through effort, through learning, and perseverance. And that's, again, uh, at the sort of secular level, that's what a growth mindset is. But again, I want to bring it to you a little bit uh, more deeper and come from a biblical perspective. So I'm first going to share with you uh, a passage which I'm sure you've heard before, which is Romans 12, 2, which says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renew renewing of your mind. And so first off, I just want to simply define some of these things. What is transformation? Uh, transformation is when there is a thorough change in your form or your appearance. And so when we're thinking about this, when we're talking about transformation, we're not talking about your physical body, we're talking about your mind. And how is that renewed according to what this, uh, this scripture reference talks about? Well, again, renewing means to refresh, uh, to restore, to resume something. And so as we uh, look at these different things, a lot of the examples I want to give you come from the athletic world. As a coach, that's uh, how I can uh, sort of hopefully uh, give you some examples and practical application uh, for these things. Um, so how can we transform our minds? How is that going to work in this world? And I also want to point out that what Paul says in the beginning of this scripture reference, it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. And I feel like, again, as I mentioned before, that this idea of a growth mindset is something that our culture and our world around us does not sort of adhere to, that uh, everyone is sort of in it for themselves and they're in it to get to the quickest way to get to a goal and, and not really transform their minds in doing so. So the first uh, sort of example I want to give you is, is just, again, sort of looking at uh, athletics. And um, I just want to ask, you can raise your hand, uh, for those of you that are athletes, what is, what is your ultimate goal as an athlete? John? To win, okay. Who else? What's your ultimate goal? Riley? To be the best, all right. Layla? Say it again. 
A positive attitude, okay. So, um, you know, a goal of an athlete, what John brought up sometimes, is winning. I want to propose that actually winning is a byproduct of something else. Winning is a byproduct of a process of getting better. As an athlete, we are striving not necessarily to come out on top, be all, end all, to win every game. We're trying to get better. And this uh, comes through, again, this mindset. And I want to, if you can go to the next side, slide, is um, something I want to present to you that you can think about either growing or you can think about the results, you can think about the process, or you can think about the product. For those of you that are in eighth grade who had me last year in world history, we studied this a little bit when we studied the Japanese culture. Does anyone remember what we studied in, in, uh, when we looked at uh, uh, the Zen gardens and the Japanese tea ceremony? What are the, some of the things? Lucas, what, what do we call that? Okay, and there was a specific term that I used, Riley? The journey versus the destination. And so, so often in our culture, we live here, Southern California, specifically in Orange County, it's all about getting to the end result as quick as possible. Let me solve this problem and let's move on. Uh, I think what we have to, if we're gonna develop a biblical perspective of growing our minds and transforming our minds, we have to concentrate on the process. Another example is I think this is for me too when I was a student. My, my biggest thing was, okay, there's a test coming up. What's the easiest way I can get an A? Uh, that's all I thought about. It wasn't about the process. It wasn't about mastering the content. It was, how do I get an A? How do I move on to the next subject? And so again, I think it's a process of us thinking about these things and developing a mindset that is more uh, worried, <clears throat> excuse me, more focused on going through the journey, going through the process instead of the end result or the product, okay? And um, there's some examples of this, I think, in the Bible that we can uh, look at, uh, especially from an adversary, adversitary, I can't say that word right now, adversity standpoint. And if you go to the next slide, I think two of those examples would be um, in Joseph and David. Who knows the story of Joseph? What, what was the story of Joseph, Gia? Real quickly. Very good. Very good summary about jo uh, Joseph. He, if you can believe this, was sold into slavery by his brothers. And ultimately, his brothers had to come back to him and bow down before him because by the time they reunited, he had become basically second in command in all of Egypt. And he went from, again, a slave to um, basically the leader of Egypt. And in this process, obviously, he had to learn from a lot of different things that were thrown his way and had to overcome a lot of adversity. The same for David. If you remember the story of David, uh, he started as a shepherd. He killed Goliath. And ultimately, he became the king of Israel. But in between all of that, there was much adversity. He had uh, Saul, King Saul, basically trying to deny him or even kill him so that he would not become the next king of Israel. And so when we look at having uh, this growth mindset, we have to understand that there is going to be challenges, there's going to be adversity that gets in the way, but that cannot deter us. That leads us to another part of growing our minds and renewing our minds is this whole idea of what are we going to do with challenges? What are we going to do with our effort? And so forth. So I want to give you some steps on how I think you can grow your mind in this uh, way that we're talking about from the book of Romans by transforming your mind, transforming yourself and renewing your mind. And the first is uh, you got to know that there are going to be challenges along the way in life, and you have to acknowledge that. And my question to you, and this is a question as a coach I give my, my team all the time, how are you going to respond? And I'm going to put this, it's very easy if you're on a team, you probably all know this if you guys are involved in a team sport, that when you're winning, everything seems to be good. 
But when that first loss comes or multiple losses comes, what is going to be your response? How are you going to respond? And that can be also asked even when things are good. How are you going to respond? Are you just going to rest on the fact that you're winning and winning and winning, or are you going to continue to try to get better? And so acknowledging these challenges, knowing that adversity is going to be in your way is the first thing that you need to do in developing this growth mindset. The second thing is effort. Again, I'm going to give you another athletic analogy. Uh, You probably have heard this if you're an athlete before, but there's a quote that says, hard work beats skill when skill doesn't work hard. And I've seen that in my 30 plus years of coaching. I've seen many, many times where teams that were smarter, that worked harder, gave a better effort, beat teams that were more skilled, plain and simple. And so that's another thing in developing this growth mindset is it takes hard work, it takes effort, and it takes a concerted effort in doing this on a daily basis. The third thing is getting uh, feedback. And I think for you guys and your age right now, it is really important for you to look to uh, your mentors to help you in giving feedback. Sometimes you view it it as criticism, but I think you need to uh, really step back and look at it and understand that this feedback is going to be beneficial for you in the long run. And that can come again from coaches from teachers, and really, most importantly, I think it comes from your parents. And I think you're at that age right now where sometimes there's that tension with your parents. But understand that the feedback that they give you is extremely important because in the end, their best, your uh, best interest is what they have at heart. And so you have to understand, even though it feels like maybe criticism sometimes, that that feedback is necessary in growing your mind and renewing your mind. And then finally, uh, I think a real big thing is celebrating uh, progress, no matter how small or how big it is. When you set goals, uh, those things need to be celebrated. And I think if you do that, then this becomes sort of a lifelong journey. It's not something that when it's done, you move on to the next thing. And it's like, I got my A, now I got to look at the next chapter. I just want to get my A and move on. It's about understanding that you can celebrate this and master these things in your life so that it is a lifelong process. And so I just want to leave you with sort of a a big idea uh, for you to think about in this whole uh, idea of uh, transforming and renewing your mind. And um, what I really think you need to focus on is that uh, you can do this because you have partners around you that have a like mind in your faith. Uh, I think you can persevere through the challenges that uh, are set before you. And when you do these things, you will find that you're able to achieve great things. And so um, uh, as we go through uh, this day and as you go through the week and through this whole school year, I hope that you will start to develop a mindset that is not one all about the transaction, just getting to the end and moving on. But that instead, that you're transforming your mind so that what you do, whether it's in academics, whether it's in sports, or whether it's in your spiritual life, that you are continually remembering that this is a lifelong journey, that you're renewing your mind is something that you're called upon to do in, uh, in the Bible, and that it can be something that is an enjoyable thing instead of just a transactional thing. So uh, I appreciate you listening, and I hope you learned even just a little bit this morning about how your mind is a powerful thing and how it constantly needs to be transformed and renewed. Let's uh, just close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, again, I just thank you for the short time that I could share uh, with the students. I pray, Lord, that, again, their ears were open, and even if they just learned one little thing, I pray, Lord, that they take that and make it into a big thing. Lord, uh, just bless our day. I just pray, Lord, for uh, safety and uh, health as we go through this day. And uh, we just thank you most of all, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. This episode has been a production of the Capistrano Valley Christian Schools Podcast Network. Capistrano Valley Christian Schools is a Christian JK-12 school in San Juan Capistrano, California. Be sure to check out, subscribe to, and leave a review of this show and the other shows on our network 
on your podcast player of choice. Doing so supports the school community in a multitude of ways. For more information about the CVCS Podcast Network or any of our other shows, check out cvcs.org or email podcasts at cvcs.org. On behalf of the whole network, this is Mr. Jasper saying thank you again for listening and stay tuned for more.